Imagine waking up one morning and the water from the tap is barely trickling. The air is so thick you can hardly breathe. What happened? Did the earth just give up or did we push her too far? Welcome to a world where forests have turned into ash, oceans have transformed into massive garbage dumps, and storms are no longer just weather phenomena but roaring monsters swallowing entire cities. You're staring right into a window of a possible future. One that needs no special effects because reality is thrilling and terrifying enough. Today we're talking about climate change, a threat that has long since ceased to be science fiction and has become hard, cold science. Are there actual scientific facts backing this up? Or are there counter arguments? And what is the worst case scenario? We've dug deep, talked to experts and reviewed studies. Now, we're taking you on this unsettling journey through the facts and myths of climate change. Sit tight, buckle up and get ready. Because today we unveil what's really at stake and how you can prepare for it. Stick around because this video could literally be life-changing. In this episode of How to Stay Alive. When did the clima on Earth changes? Step one, the rapid rise of CO2. Why your breath could suddenly become a scarce commodity. You're breathing in right now, feeling the air flow through your lungs. Sounds like a given, right? But what if I tell you that this taken for granted act might soon be a thing of the past? The molecules you've just inhaled contain more carbon dioxide than ever before in human history. Yes, you heard that right. Imagine the atmosphere as a giant scale constantly swinging back and forth. And now we're rapidly loading that scale with carbon dioxide at a rate that hardly gives Earth time to adjust. In the last 50 years, the CO2 level has increased by over 30%. 30%. Now you might think, so what? What difference does it make? But every additional particle of CO2 hanging in the atmosphere acts like a tiny heat shield. It traps solar rays and causes global temperatures to rise. And higher temperatures mean more than just warmer summers. They are harbingers of wildfires, melting glaciers, and deadly heat waves. Scientists agree. Humans are the main culprit of this rapid increase. Through burning fossil fuels, deforestation, and industrial production, we're pumping CO2 into the air like there's no tomorrow. But here's the kicker. There are ways to turn this around. You could start living sustainably, minimize your CO2 footprint, and put pressure on politics. This is no game. It's a race against time. And in this race, every single one of us is a crucial player. Stick around, as in the next steps we reveal what life on a CO2 overloaded Earth could look like and what you can do to prevent the worst from happening. Step 2. Melting of the poles, the rise of the seas and the disappearance of land. Now that you know how the CO2 levels in the atmosphere are rising, let's travel to the coldest places on our planet. Yes, I'm talking about the Arctic and Antarctic. These icy expanses are melting away, and it has catastrophic implications. Ever watched an ice cube melt in a glass of water? Now multiply that by billions and you've got an idea of what's happening at our poles. Ever heard of Greenland? This massive ice block loses around 280 billion tons of ice every year. You heard that right, 280 billion tons. And where does that water go? Straight into our oceans. Sea levels are rising and it's not science fiction. It's hard-hitting reality. This rise isn't just a nightmare for coastal cities. No entire countries could vanish. The Maldives, Bangladesh, the list goes on. And yes, even wealthy countries aren't safe. Miami, New York, Amsterdam. Imagine these cities underwater. But here's the truly terrifying part. The melting of the poles releases methane, a greenhouse gas far worse than CO2. It's like a deadly spiral picking up speed. It's high time to act, conserve energy, promote renewable sources, and reconsider our way of life. Because if we don't turn the tide, it could be too late for many of us. Do you want to be the one who just watches? Or will you take on the challenge? Step 3. Extreme weather events. The furious power of nature unleashed from melting poles straight to raging storms and scorching heat. Think that's a coincidence? Think again. These events are interconnected, and how? As we speak, hurricanes are forming that are so powerful they can devastate entire cities. Think Hurricane Katrina, and now imagine such storms becoming the new norm. But storms are just the tip of the iceberg. Heat, drought, wildfires, they're all increasing in both frequency and intensity. California is burning, Australia is aflame, and the Amazon forests are a shadow of themselves. These places aren't just picturesque travel destinations, they're the lungs of our planet. Climate change is giving free rein to the elements and they're striking back with full force. 
water, air, fire, earth, they're all conspiring against us. Think an earthquake has nothing to do with climate change? Wrong. Melting poles and rising seas are altering the pressure conditions within the earth. This is not a drill. This is the real deal. If we don't act now, extreme weather events could escalate to a point where life, as we know it, becomes a constant tightrope walk between disasters. No place would be safe. Do you want to live in a world that's a constant obstacle course? No? Then we must act now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but now. Attention. You're probably wondering how could I prepare for such a challenge? Or what equipment would I need to survive such extreme conditions? We have something for you that might be of interest. Check out the video description and discover the product that could make a difference in this particular episode. Trust us, you'll want to know, but now let's get back to the video. Step 4. The Oceans Strike Back From the disappearance of corals to the apocalypse of marine life Just when you thought the situation couldn't get any more dramatic, the gates of the oceans open up and they're angry. Yes, you heard it right. Our oceans, which serve as the cradle of life and a recreational space, could soon become hostile to life. The Great Barrier Reef is just a taste of what could happen. It's fading, dying, and turning into a ghost town of the seas. The oceans are getting more acidic, warmer, and losing their oxygen. That's like a triple punch to marine life. Think of all the exotic fish, the colorful corals, and the majestic whales. They're all fighting for survival. But wait, there's more. Remember those extreme weather events we talked about? They also impact the seas. Tsunamis and storm surges could increase in power and frequency. Entire coastal regions would be at risk. The very existence of cities like New York, Tokyo, and Sydney could be at stake. Now you might think, this is far away, it doesn't concern me. Wrong. Over half the world's population lives close to the coast. The oceans are our lifeline. They regulate the climate and are a massive source of food. It's time to recognize the gravity of the situation. If the oceans fall, we all fall. And that fall might come faster than you think. This is not the time for hesitation. This is the time for action. Step 5. The Climate War of Insects. How ants and bees could become our last hope. Now let's pause for a moment and consider something many of us often overlook. Insects. Yes, these tiny crawlers could be the unsung heroes in the climate crisis. Forget superheroes. It's ants and bees that could save the world. Imagine an ant colony playing a crucial role in the carbon cycle. By constantly building tunnels and chambers, they help aerate the soil, providing more oxygen and nutrients for plants. These plants, in turn, absorb carbon dioxide, our number one climate killer. But beware, what happens if these tiny helpers go extinct due to climate change? We could lose essential allies in the fight against global warming, a domino effect that exacerbates the crisis further. Then there are the bees. They are the diligent pollinators responsible for producing about one third of the food we eat. No bees, no pollination, no food. It's that simple and that terrifying at the same time. Did you know that there are species of bees that are heat resistant and can adapt to more extreme conditions? We must protect and promote these species as they could be our last line of defense. It's fascinating and alarming at the same time. The small things in life could have a massive impact. It's not too late to take action and make these tiny warriors our allies. This is the moment when we start to truly see the world as an interconnected system, where everyone, even the smallest organism, counts. Step 6. The Renaissance of Recycling. The Racetrack to a Zero Waste Lifestyle. Now that we've seen how the smallest creatures can protect our environment, it's time for us to take our own role seriously. Imagine we all transform into highly skilled environmental athletes sprinting on a racetrack towards a zero-waste lifestyle. Each of us has the task of becoming a team of recycling experts. Your kitchen turns into a high-tech recycling facility. Your living room becomes a composting station. Did you know that most plastic waste ends up in the oceans and breaks down into so-called microplastics? Now's your chance to take action. On this racetrack, there's no time for failure. Your first goal is to stop casually throwing away food scraps. They are valuable resources for compost which in turn nourishes the soil and helps plants absorb more carbon dioxide. Your second goal is to banish plastic from your life. That's no small task, but with enough willpower you can achieve it. There are so many alternatives out there. Bamboo toothbrushes, reusable shopping bags, and glass containers for your food. Your third goal, e-waste. Old smartphones, laptops, and televisions contain valuable materials that can be recycled. Send them for recycling instead of disposing of them. This is a race against time, but also against ignorance and habit. But imagine the reward. A world where our children can grow up without being surrounded by piles of trash or melting ice caps. 
you are now a vital part of this movement. Step 7. The Energy Revolution. From fossil fuels to renewable energies. After proving ourselves as recycling champions, we dive into the next challenge. The Energy Revolution. We navigate through a maze of wind turbines and solar panels, leaving fossil fuels in the dust. This is no ordinary transition, my friends. This is a shift of epic proportions. Imagine if we could harness enough energy from the sun and wind to power an entire country. No more air pollution, no more oil drilling in sensitive ecosystems. Your first goal here is to analyze your own energy consumption. Install an app that helps you track your carbon footprint. You'll be surprised at how much you can save just by turning off the lights when you don't need them. Your second goal, become a renewable energy evangelist. Talk to your friends and family. Explain how solar and wind power can not only protect the environment, but also create jobs. Thirdly, and here's the kicker, invest in solar panels for your own home. The upfront cost may seem daunting, but in the long run, you'll save money while also making a contribution to environmental protection. But wait, there's more. Did you know there are already technologies that allow us to harness energy from the waves of the sea? Yes, you heard that right. We are on the threshold of an entirely new era of energy production. This is a race we cannot afford to lose. The planet is counting on us, and it is our duty to accelerate the transition. The energy revolution has already begun and you are now a crucial part of it. Step 8. The ultimate community action. Uniting for a better world. Now comes the absolute climax, the final step in our incredible journey. The power of community. You've already set individual stones in motion, but now it's time to move entire mountains. This moment is more than just a simple gathering of people. It's the founding of a movement, a revolution for the planet. Don't think you're alone. Millions of people worldwide are already actively shaping change. First, find local initiatives that are committed to the environment and join them. Whether it's a beach cleanup or planting trees, every action counts. Second, use social media to share your successes and challenges. Your story can inspire and encourage others to become active as well. Third, participate in petitions and political activities. Your voice has power and it can influence laws and regulations. But wait, here comes the crucial twist. Start your own small project that revolves around sustainability. It could be as simple as a blog offering tips for eco-friendly everyday life, or as complex as developing an app that displays nearby sustainability projects. Science confirms the power of community. I've shown that social norms and collective actions play a critical role in behavior changes. So your participation in the community will not only improve your life, but also the lives of many people. Now is the moment where we all come together and make the impossible possible. This is our last chance to save our planet, and the best part is, you're not alone. If you still want to know why rabies continues to be underestimated, what happens to a person infected with rabies, and how to survive it in case the worst happens, then click on this video now. Truly intense.